morning, Seattle Baptist Church, and welcome to our Sunday morning church service. We're excited to see how the Lord uh, works in all of our hearts through the preaching of His Word and the singing. And uh, as we begin this service, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you that we can gather around your word. Thank you for Pastor Cox, his faithfulness uh, to you and the preaching. And I pray that you just bless this time now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. time we'll be taking our offering. Miss Anna is going to play our offertory. And let's remember this week, if God's given us increase, let's give back to him faithfully and cheerfully. He's been so good to us, and we're going to pray for this morning's offering. Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Lord, you've been good to each and every one of us, Lord. We're so glad that every good and perfect gift comes from above. I pray now, Lord, that you'd bless the people of Seattle Baptist Church I pray that we'd all give faithfully and cheerfully. Thank you for meeting our needs. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
so this morning we're going to do our scripture reading and our text is going to be in Acts chapter 17. So let's turn there together. Acts chapter number 17 is where pastor uh, will be preaching from this morning. And we're going to be reading verses 22 down through the beginning of verse 28. Acts 17. And we'll begin in verse 22 and stop at the beginning of verse 28. The Bible says this, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed in anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath in all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. And though I've had my 
my side, he's always stood through it all. God's been good. The book of Acts chapter 17, the book of Acts chapter 17 uh, that was read earlier in our hearing. I want to preach a message this morning entitled God is Essential. God is Essential. The Apostle Paul in our text is in Athens, Greece. Athens is a world epicenter of culture and education, artistry, ingenuity, philosophy, military might, and money. His spirit, Paul's spirit, was stirred as he viewed firsthand how far the Athenians were from God. Now, they don't think they are far, but they are very far from God. I'm going to tell you up front here in the message that Paul didn't have a lot of fruit in Athens. The Bible tells us that certain men clave unto him and believed uh, among them uh, Dion, uh, Dionysius um, followed him, a woman named Demarius, and others with them. There were a few. doesn't seem to be a real uh, honey hole of converts, but I want to give credit where credit is due and say that at least the Athenians listened. At least the Athenians heard the Apostle Paul and his message. Uh, Jews lived there who did not believe Messiah had come. Jews lived there that believed that Jesus' disciples stole his body away from the tomb and claimed his resurrection, but at least they listened. Acts chapter 17, verse 17, tells us that they met with him. Now they disputed but at least they listened. Certain philosophers, I'll call them naysayers, critical of Paul's message and doctrine, they listened. Some said, what will this babbler say? Verse 18 of Acts 17, they called him a babbler. Okay, so what? But at least they listened. Some said, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. So they, at least they listened to his doctrine. You see, the Epicurean philosophers believe that everything happens by chance. They believe that death is the end of all. They believe that the gods are uncaring and pleasure is the main goal, uh, in, uh, the main goal of man. But I want to say again, at least they listened. At least they listened to the message of Paul. The Stoics, who also were philosophers, believed that everything is God. Everything is God. God is everything. God can be a fly. God can be uh, a horse. God can be whatever. They believed that everything happens. Everything that happens is the will of God and must be accepted without resentment. They believed if the world ends, the cycle of life will somehow repeat. But, but at least they listened. At least they listened to the message of the Apostle Paul. They listened as he preached that the true and living God is essential. God is essential. And I want to stand this morning and I want to remind us in the United States of America, I want to remind us in Washington State, in our counties, in our cities, and uh, at Seattle Baptist Church, I want to remind us that God is essential. God is essential. I I'll tell you, when stay home and stay in place, state, state lockdown was announced, and the list of essential services was printed, I was appalled. I was very appalled. I was appalled because they left God out. They left church out. For the first time in America's history, it was deemed 
by someone, I don't know who the someone or someones were, uh, that we don't need church during calamity. Now they remembered the warehouses. They remembered the grocery stores and the lumber, lumber companies and the large retailers, and that's okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. By the way, they should have remembered the small businesses also. But somebody left God out. Somebody left God out. And I'm not fine with that. And I'm going to tell you, God's not fine with that either. Church wasn't on the list. Spiritual health wasn't considered. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, was deleted from their list. We, 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 somebody forgot. God bless America. Land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. Somebody forgot that on our coinage is in God we trust. And by the way, when that, that's printed, that's talking about the God of the Bible. Uh, somebody forgot uh, God bless America. We forgot America, America. God shed his grace on thee. The Walmart followers can assemble three to four hundred inside at a time, but not, not followers of Jesus. Uh, not, the, not, not folks who go to church. The Costco members can flow through their facility at about four to five thousand a day, but not the Seattle Baptist Church members. And, and I'm not de-emphasizing the virus in our land. I'm emphasizing the fact that the local church can take every precaution that Costco and Walmart takes. Uh, hey, I t we meet on Sundays. They meet seven days a week, at least 10 hours a day. They've exposed thousands and thousands. Nobody has said a word about that. Uh, there have been clusters of outbreaks among health workers. There have been clusters of outbreaks uh, in law enforcement. There have been clusters of outbreaks in retailers while houses of worship have been off limits and church now is back in phase four until we can fill the house again. And politicians shake their fingers at us like we're second-rate citizens and ignorant of how to stay safe. And I'll tell you how to stay safe. Maybe they need to know this. Get saved. Uh, trust Christ as your Savior. Put faith in Jesus. And after you do it, wash your hands. Oh, they say we need more science. No, we need more God. And I'm for scientific facts. Uh, but I'm not interested in science falsely so-called. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. And if your Bible doesn't say science falsely so-called, that's a relevant phrase there. And I'd get me a new Bible is what I would do. Paul preached, God that made the world and all things therein. He's the Lord of heaven and earth. He giveth all life and breath and all things. He hath made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. He is not far from every one of us. What a good God. What a loving God. What a kind God and gracious God. He is. And then the Bible says, for in him we live and move and have our being. My friend, God is essential. God is essential in our nation. God is essential in our counties and our cities. God is essential in our individual lives. In churches, first of all, he's essential for life. Our breath, our very breath came from his breath. He breathed into man the breath of life and man became a, a living soul. You say, well, I, I don't believe that. Well, you could just at least listen. You could at just at least listen to the preacher this morning. You could listen and see if God speaks to your humanistic, cold and calloused and defiant heart. And maybe strikes a broken cord that only he can mend and make whole. I know Deep down, you have a hurt. Deep down, you have a heartache. And you've lashed out against God and surrounded yourself with others who do the same. And I want you to know he loves you dearly. 
He still loves you. He'll save your soul. He'll embrace you as his child and sweep you up to his heaven one day for all eternity. Listen to me, God is essential. He's essential for life. Uh, every breath you and I breathe, we breathe because of his mercy and grace. And by appointment, that last breath will be taken soon. You'll be glad that you realized God is essential. God's essential. He's essential for life. Second of all, he's essential for moving. In him we live and move, Paul said. I wouldn't want to move without him. I wouldn't want to be so foolish as to factor him out of everyday life. I move best in him as a human made of flesh and blood created by him he knows all about me he knows all about my feelings he knows all about my mind my heart he he cares for me I move best in him and by the way you do too I tell you as I move every day in life I want to move with his presence I want to move with his guidance I want to move with his strength and power in my life. I want to move with his promises. I want to move with, with his patience. I want to move with his peace. I want to move in life fearing the Lord. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. I want to move in him. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, you could still listen. You could still hear God out. You could still give him an opportunity to speak to your heart. You may think I'm a babbler. You know, just a nobody Baptist preacher trying to point you to the best way of living. And that's Jesus' way. He said, I am the way, not a way. I am the truth, not a truth. I am the life, not a life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. By the way, how's your life? How's life your way? Do you have everlasting peace that passeth all understanding in your heart right now? Do you have joy unspeakable and full of glory? Do you have the love of God shed abroad in your heart? Are you bitterness free? Are you anger free? Are you grudge free? Are you resentment free? Listen to me, my friend. Jesus can help you with that. He came to give you and all of us abundant life. You don't have to live with that hurtful baggage, that guilt-filled baggage. You can cast all your cares upon him for he careth for you. Listen to me, my friend. God is essential. God is essential. He's essential for life. He's essential for moving. I don't want to move without him. I want my hand to be in his hand every moment of every day. That in all things he might have the preeminence. Oh, I wish. I wish Jesus was first and exalted highly in America and in our state and by our government and by all churches and people and individuals and high and lifted up in this nation. God's essential for life. He's essential for moving. And he's essential for being. For in him we live and move and have our being. Our being. Many ask, 
in life? What is my purpose? What's the purpose of my being? I've got that answer for you. The answer is Christ. The answer is Christ. You say, I don't believe that. But you could listen. You could listen. You could open your heart. Before the foundation of the world, God knew you. He planned you. Then he made you. He designed you and I with a purpose in mind. There's none other on this earth and never will be exactly like you. There's only one you. And there will forevermore always be only one you. He knows everything about you, God does. He knows your wants. He knows your needs. He has a full supply to enable you to fulfill all that is right and good in his sight. He has such a plan for you as to make the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient creator God pleased. Pleased. There he is true There is true purpose and fulfillment in him. That's where the fulfillment of life is in him. For in him we live and move and have our being. One day we shall stand before him. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, what joy. Oh, what thrill. Oh, what excitement. Oh, what fulfillment to know assuredly purpose accomplished. Purpose accomplished. God created me. God made me. God saved me. God strengthens me. God brought me to his heaven. And he's pleased. He's pleased. For those words to fall upon the ears of whoever you are and in whatever you do for his glory. I want to say this morning, that's the ultimate fulfillment. So you see, God is essential. He's our creator, our savior, our master, our Lord, our sustainer, our king, our all in all. And for in him, we live and move. I hope you listen. I hope you'll look to him. And I hope you'll decide this day, this moment, this hour that God is essential. He's essential. In this moment, God's speaking to your heart. Maybe you're not saved. You know, when Paul stood on Mars Hill and preach this message that's before us in Acts chapter 17. That message fell on some ears that just didn't listen, wouldn't listen, I mean just wouldn't listen, wouldn't wouldn't believe. But then there was a few that trusted in Jesus. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you can see how the world has failed you. Maybe you can see in life how many have failed you. You can 
open your eyes this morning, you see that Jesus never fails. He's essential. Would you ask Jesus in your heart today? Would you invite him in your life today? If you would, I encourage you to pray this prayer by faith. You're talking to Jesus and you're inviting him in your heart. I'll help you word the prayer and say, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Dear Jesus, I believe you are the Savior and the Son of God. And at this time, I'm asking you to save my soul. I'm putting my faith in you as my Savior to take me to heaven one day when I die. I hope you prayed that prayer. And I hope you meant it. And I hope you live for Jesus. You know, dear Christian, let me speak to us just a minute. Maybe in our lives and families, God has a place, but God hasn't been essential. Maybe we've kind of pushed God back on the back burner a bit. We realize afresh and anew as we look all around that we need to look up and we need to remember he's always there. He's always faithful. He's always true. He always has our best interest in mind for his honor and glory. Maybe you need to rededicate your life right now. Maybe you need to brush other things aside and bring Jesus to the forefront. Confess and forsake your sins. The Lord says you'll find mercy. You'll find mercy. What a wonderful truth from God's word. He's essential. He's essential. Why the chaos? Why the confusion? It's because we've left Christ out when he's essential. Father, I ask that you would bless the word of God to our hearts today. May we give you first place. First place in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.